Raquel hides under the playground seats every day to watch her rich neighbor in training. His handsome face, strong arms, and eight-pack abs under the pouring rain make Raquel crazy about him. After the training session, Raquel sneaks up on him and follows him to a remote mountain graveyard. But she soon gets lost in the woods and falls into a mud puddle. In the next moment, a pair of big hands hit her shoulders. Ares catches her and asks why she's following him. Raquel nervously retorts that she wasn't stalking him. So he tugs Raquel's wrist to a tombstone and writes her Wi-Fi password on her hand Ares, Greek god. Then Ares flirts with her, saying he already knows she's obsessed with him. It turns out that Ares had already hacked into her computer and found out that she had collected a lot of photos and information about him. He even read some of the fictional stories she had written about being with him. Seeing that the secret of her unrequited love can no longer be hidden, Raquel bravely confesses her love to him. Porque me gustas. ¿Te enamores de mí? Ares snickers at her favor and says you're not even my type. He closes in on her, hooking her necklace and pulling her into his arms. He flirts with her with his lips, but draws away the moment her nose touches it, walking away coldly. In the evening, she returns to her room, frustrated, unaware that Ares is sitting on the windowsill across from her, peeking at her. Even though they are neighbors, there is a huge class difference between them. Ares's family owns Alpha 3, the most influential company in Spain. This wealthy empire has three heirs named after Greek gods, Artemis, the eldest, Apollo, the youngest, the second and most mysterious, the sexiest Ares is the one Raquel is pathologically obsessed with. Since they live in completely different worlds, Raquel has never spoken to Ares until the day her router went down. She goes to the window to check the cable and is surprised to find Apollo sitting below. He says his Wi-Fi is not working. Since she had previously given her brother Ares the password, he comes over to use her Wi-Fi. This leaves Raquel confused. How could she not know when she had talked to Ares? Late at night, when Ares moves his computer to her yard and plays music, it wakes her up. She criticizes him for being a jerk for using her Wi-Fi without her permission. However, he's not afraid of her at all and makes a valid point about his not working, and she's powerless to stop him. When he leaves, he gives Raquel the nickname Witch. Raquel is determined to show him that he's messing with the wrong guy. The second time they talk, she finds the courage to confess her love for him. But his attitude makes Raquel even more puzzled. It seems like he does not reject her, but he doesn't want to build a relationship with her. Raquel gets discouraged and furious. So she goes home and unplugs her router. In the middle of the night, Ares breaks into her room through the window, startling her. He says someone unplugged the router, so he comes to reconnect the Wi-Fi. Raquel gets pissed and says she's going to sue him for trespassing. Ares is confident she won't. Pues porque yo a ti te gusto. This is the second time he's turned Raquel down, but his next behavior so contradicts his words. He squats in front of Raquel and gently spreads her legs. Her delicate skin is very sensitive to his gentle touch and kisses. Raquel, who has been single for 18 years, suddenly breathes heavily and loses her mind as he arouses her. Just as she is expecting him to take the next step, Ares rolls out the window and runs away. The next day, Ares shows up at the ice cream stand where Raquel works part-time. He says his older brother runs a club. He wants to invite her to the opening tonight as compensation for him using her Wi-Fi. Even though she knows he doesn't have feelings for her, Raquel can't bear to say no. At night, Raquel brings her friend Daniela along to the elite-studded party. The outgoing Daniela is attracted to these gorgeous people and is soon leaving her alone. Raquel immediately begins searching for Ares. After seeing him walk through a door, she follows him into a deserted alley. Ares stands in the dim light and smokes a cigarette before approaching her and flirting with her. Raquel couldn't let him get the better of her. She pushes Ares down onto a beer crate, sits on his lap, and kisses him passionately. But when Ares kisses her back, she gets up and walks away, leaving him confused and lost. She runs into the bar and meets his younger brother, Apollo. Apollo complains that his older brother won't let anyone give him booze. Raquel sees that he is bored and gets him a vodka soda. To her distress, Apollo gets drunk easily and insists on leaving with her. And the beautiful Daniela arouses his interest. Even with a splitting headache, he couldn't resist touching Daniela's hair. Raquel picks up her cell phone and changes the destination of the Uber to take him to his home. But as soon as he hears the word home, Apollo becomes wary. He vehemently refuses to go home and throws Raquel's phone out the window. Raquel has no choice but to put the drunken, disobedient boy in her bed. When the sky turns from dark to a light blue, Ares breaks in through the window. He sits on her bed and puts his hand on his drunken brother's back and rubs it, trying to make him feel better. Ares compliments him on his professionalism as a doctor. He says his grandpa died of allergies before, so he started reading about medicine. His father hates being drunk, so none of the three of them dare show up to the house drunk. Ares claims that neither he nor his brother will go back home until his father leaves for work. He then unbuttons his shirt and lays down on her bed and asks her if she wants to stay up to read or go to bed. Raquel barely thinks before she starts slipping on her shoes and laying down between the two brothers. 
After seeing Ares turn his head toward her, she shyly rolls over. Ares turns over towards her and puts his hand on her glittery skirt. Groping around for something, Raquel lays her head on his arm, experiencing a pleasure she hasn't felt in over a decade of being single. The next day, at noon, Raquel's best friend Yoshi arrives at her house, looking for a tutor. Raquel is surprised to see an unfamiliar bag on her desk containing a new cell phone and a note from Ares. Despite her poverty, Raquel's pride is too strong for her to accept this kind of charity. She goes next door and, under the guise of returning something, enters for the first time the prince's castle that she's been observing from afar for years. Claudia, the housekeeper, leads her to Ares in the playroom. As soon as she enters, Raquel sees him video chatting with a topless girl. Ares catches a glimpse of her and the cell phone box she's holding in her hand. He hangs up immediately. He tells her to not be so proud and to think of it as compensation for his brother breaking her cell phone screen. Raquel thinks he's toying with her. She gets angry and throws the phone down to leave. Ares comes after her and catches her by the arm. She hates being fooled around by him, but she can't help craving him. The two of them happily spend the afternoon playing on the pool table and the couch. But when Raquel tries to ask him for a little affection, he quickly puts on his pants and starts playing games. Raquel's self-esteem is bruised and she angrily leaves the scumbag. Across two windows, Ares gazes fondly at the necklace she left behind while Raquel writes his story about acting like a bad guy on the computer. The next day in class, Ares sends her a picture of him wearing her necklace. In order to get her belongings back, Raquel has to come to the place that broke her heart again. Apollo sees her and enthusiastically takes her to the pool, where he introduces her to the other rich kids. They play a game of Never Have I Ever and jump into the water to have fun. As Raquel marvels at the housekeeper and Artemis standing in the shade kissing, Ares rushes over and jumps into the pool with her in his arms. After swallowing some water, she rushes to the surface and says it's salty. Ares explains that he's allergic to chlorine. In order to get the necklace back, she walks into her crush's room for the first time in years after peeking in on him. Ares helps her put the necklace on. With the warmth of the sun and the rush of adrenaline, they work out in every part of the room. However, when Ares wakes up, her life takes a turn for the worse. Ares asks Claudia to come into the room and get rid of her. He stands on the rooftop and stares at her resentful back without giving her a word of explanation. Raquel runs to Yoshi's house in grief, looking for comfort. In order to get her out of her depression, he takes her to Daniela's party. Unfortunately, they see Ares hitting on another girl not far away. Yoshi hurriedly takes her away from the scumbag. They sneak into the high school swimming pool. In fact, Yoshi doesn't just treat her as a friend. He's had a crush on Raquel since he was a kid. Yoshi lies on her lap and tells her how much he likes her. Even though Raquel had heard his confession many times, she had always considered him as a good friend. Yoshi jumps into the water to calm his desires. To his horror, a bunch of yellow things are running fast towards him. Raquel quickly pulls him to shore and escapes. It turns out Daniela was trying to make some bubbles in the pool and accidentally opened the fecal pipe. After a night of partying with her friends, a drunken Raquel stumbles onto the street in front of her house. Ares notices her, picks her up on his shoulders, and takes her back to her room by climbing through the window. Drunk Raquel forgets about his irresponsible behavior. She's still so fond of him that she doesn't want him to leave and begs him to tell a story. It is here that Ares reveals why he was close to her at one time and far away from her at the next. It turns out that it's not that he doesn't love her, but that he's afraid of falling in love. When he was a child, he thought his parents were the perfect couple. But one day he broke into his mother's room and found another man in her bed. His father didn't blame his mother when he heard about it. His father called him over, showed him pictures of women from all over the world, and confessed that he was seeing other women, too. His parents' open marriage scared Ares. Since then, he believes that love is weakness and is afraid to fall in love. Unfortunately, a drunken Raquel doesn't even remember his heartfelt confession. She wakes up the next day and forgets she even saw him last night. Looking at the two messages on her phone that Ares had withdrawn, she thinks he's messing with her again. So she breaks off contact with him. His father and older brother summon Ares to the study because they've noticed his grades have been dropping lately. His father reminds him of his responsibility to study hard, go to Stanford for economics, and get on the board of the family business. Eventually, his father gives him a final warning. Ares obeys him, suppressing his desire to see Raquel, but he realizes that without her, his life is hopeless. So he rushes into the library, finds Raquel, and apologizes. After realizing that he can't live without Raquel, he tells her he loves her. Looking at this handsome face, Raquel couldn't say no. She forgives him and agrees to go out with him. Raquel goes on a date dressed as a witch. Ares picks her up at her door dressed as a Greek god. He brings her to the roof of his fancy corporate building and pretends it's the Olympus. They make it a cozy, private space with wine glasses, candlelight, quilts and more. Since then, the Ferris wheel, the restroom, and everywhere else you can think of has become their paradise. But his family soon catches wind of their playtime at the office. 
Once the video becomes public, the company will lose business and partners. His father accuses him of being irresponsible. To the family's surprise, Aries doesn't stay silent this time. He rebels and says he won't go to America to study economics. He decides to stay with Raquel. He wants to escape from his oppressive family and do what he's passionate about. To earn money for attending his favorite medical school, he starts working at a fast food restaurant. But his arrogant brother Artemis soon catches on. He couldn't accept that Ares was giving up a promising career and status because of a poor girl. So he throws a company party and invites Raquel. At night, Raquel puts on her most expensive dress and follows Ares to the company. She's nervous about the lavish party and the high-flying elite. Ares proudly introduces her to his parents. His father is still being sarcastic about the last time they played on the top floor. Instead of warmly entertaining Raquel, they discuss the opera, which she doesn't understand at all. Raquel turns her head anxiously and is surprised to see her mother in a waitress's dress carrying a tray. Fearful of embarrassment, she tries to escape, but accidentally bumps into a waiter and falls. The moment she meets her mother's eyes, Raquel runs away, feeling inferior. She thinks Ares prepared all this to humiliate her. So she slaps Ares across the face and runs away sadly. Artemis approaches Ares and gives him a lecture on how to give up this common girl. Turns out Artemis set it all up on purpose. I'm sure I'm American it is. The huge gap between the two families causes them to break up. At dinner the next day, his parents praise Artemis for making the party a success. The board of directors and clients now trust Artemis. In order not to jeopardize what seems to be a happy and successful family, Ares gives up his rebellion. Meanwhile, Raquel's mother enters her room and talks to her. Raquel cries and apologizes, regretting the way she treated her mother. She bemoans the fact that she has been fooling herself all along, thinking that money and social status could not stand in the way of love. Her mother urges her not to give up and to be brave enough to go after what she wants. On the day of the prom, Raquel runs next door, only to be stopped by Artemis. She yells out for Ares and wants to talk to him. Artemis kicks her out of the house. Ares hears her voice, but he's too torn up by his family's pressure to move. Raquel doesn't push him, she just texts him that she'll be waiting for him at the prom. An hour later, Ares is determined to get back to the one he loves. He makes a beeline for Raquel's dance. Just as he walks through the door, he runs into Yoshi. Yoshi stops him from going in. Yoshi is furious with him for hurting Raquel so many times. He calls Ares an idiot and warns him to stay away from Raquel. Ares takes him by the arm and leads him to the school pool. Ares admits he was wrong and tells Yoshi all about his love for Raquel. In fact, he has always known that Yoshi likes Raquel. But Yoshi still wouldn't let him see Raquel. So Ares asks him to beat him up, just to take it out on Raquel. Without hesitation, Yoshi punches him once. During the second punch, Ares loses his balance and falls into the pool. Yoshi rushes to turn on the light, not realizing that he's kicked over the chlorine and it's spilling out. After seeing Ares lying motionless at the bottom of the pool, Yoshi leaves in a panic. A short time later, Ares wakes up with a splitting headache. But he slips and falls into the chlorine-filled pool at the bottom. When he emerges and tries to climb back to shore, he's allergic to chlorine, and suddenly he can't breathe. Then he completely loses consciousness and sinks to the bottom of the pool. On the other hand, Yoshi quickly reaches out to a disappointed Raquel. He tells her all about his fight with Ares and his fall into the pool. Raquel realizes something is wrong and quickly runs to the pool. As soon as she enters, she sees him floating in the water. Without hesitation, she jumps in, picks up Ares, and screams for help. Yoshi brings a rope and pulls them both from the bottom of the pool. Ares is taken to the hospital. He is in the ICU due to severe anaphylactic shock and lack of respiration. His father blames Raquel for all this. But this time Raquel doesn't back down. She chooses to take care of Ares every day and every night. She breaks into Ares' house and talks to his father and brother. The fear of losing Ares shakes his family's principles, so they no longer stand in the way of his love for Raquel. When Ares finally opens his eyes, he gets what he's been waiting for. Raquel becomes his lover. They had spent the summer in each other's arms. His family no longer pushing him to study economics and take on the company's business. With his family's full support and his lover's understanding, Ares is finally ready to go to one of the best medical schools in the world. Raquel escorts him to the airport for his flight to Stockholm, 1800 miles away. It is only then that she realizes he's been in love with her since before he even spoke to her. As she watches him fade into the crowd, Raquel hugs her mother and cries. Although they enter into a long-distance relationship, their love won't fade away, because they would give each other surprises, just like the little gift Raquel put in his pocket. And four months later, Ares suddenly shows up on her windowsill and comes back to ask for a new gift. This is Maroon Recap. If there's a movie you'd like to watch, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Let's watch a movie together and experience something different. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.